Hey, how y'all doing this time? I'm recording this on my phone, so it's may not look the greatest, but I thought I'd do a little review of our Ibex TX31 baler and the uh, mower that we got with it. There's the mower. Here's our hay. We had a couple of bales there that didn't tie off right, but that's the hay we made with it. And we have the rake, the V rake sitting out there. All the three of those are from Ibex, and that's our tractor, uh, 3025E John Deere. It does have live PTO, so we don't have issues with pushing in the clutch. It's hydrostatic drive on top of that, but that's the tractor we used. Anyway, as you can see, we got the draw bar addition here added to it, and uh, I wouldn't buy one of them without it. There's no way that I would run that off a three-point hitch. For one thing, you can see where those hitch pins are. It sets way too close to your tractor. You can't monitor your uh, pickup very well. And there's the pickup down here. You can see. I think it's a uh, two foot thereabouts. It may be a little bit bigger than that, but it's generally I would consider it to be two foot. And the uh, drawbar attachment, when you buy it, it comes with the drawbar, uh, all the pins, all, all everything you need, drive shaft. The only thing it doesn't come with is this little piece of chain right here. That's the only thing you got to come up with on your own is that little piece of chain, which it makes it really nice. I mean, I ain't, I'm not even kidding when I tell you I would not bail hay with that. And uh, there, and I don't know how yours connects, but that's how ours connects. Uh, there you go, over to Eighth Day Chronicle. He has a mini mower or mini baler too. All right, it, it basically looks the same. The uh, hay strain goes in here. There's a little bit mini bales there too, a uh, full size bale of uh, string won't fit in here. But what we take these two bolts loose right here, that'll move back. You can put a full size bale in there and then put your two bolts back in it. And uh, this is a little whistler. The battery compartment, the battery compartment for the uh, bell full alarm over here. You can hear that when that arm drops, makes that racket. Uh, we do not have, we have the manual uh, bell release. So when you're on the tractor and th that arm drops, it makes that sound. It'll tie that off. And once it cuts, cuts the string, this is its neutral position. That's where it'll land. Then you pull this and it activates hydraulics back over here. That'll raise the gate. It'll over here, raise the gate back here and uh, kick the bell out. Does a real good job. Right there's the little hydraulic pump. Right there, drives off the main shaft. Uh, your bear, bell density. This here it looks a lot like what uh, Eight Day Chronicles was showing on theirs. That all that stuff looks amazingly the same. Ours has two two selections. This is eight wraps and eleven wraps on your string. And uh, it does use a ton of string. If you put it on uh, 11 wraps, it'll use well over 50 feet of string to wrap one bell. And uh, that's the inside. You can kind of see we left a little piece of a bell in there. We'll get that out. This is our, just our first cutting. We're going to cut again. And on this side of the tractor, or the baler, this is how you adjust your pickup head. You set this chain to however close you want that uh, pickup head to go to the ground. Uh, I can tell you, 
It don't need to be closer than a couple of inches if you have very rough terrain. If you have pretty smooth terrain, you can get by with an inch. But uh, we set it at about two inches and uh, it still occasionally will pick up a, a stick or a rock or something off the ground. Sorry about my finger being in the way. This here is the uh, chain mechanism that drives everything. As you can see, it's pretty dusty. Uh, we're going to use it again, so I haven't cleaned it thoroughly, but I want to go ahead and do this video. This is the main drive shaft. It has a shear bolt right here. And just like 8th Day Chronicles, we have never sheared a bolt. We got uh, eight more of them up there, right up here. They send them, when you buy the mower or the uh, equipment, it comes with those already in uh, sitting up there waiting on you. As you can see, this here is the shaft that uh, drops the mower head. Right now, it's you can see it's in transport position because we pulled it up out of the field. When it's in working position, you pull this handle down, slide this over, and that tightens this chain up and uh, sets the head, head on the uh, pickup. These chains... Unlike it, uh, eighth day, ours does not self oil. We have to oil it, and so we use motorcycle chain lube. That's that's I rode motorcycles a bunch, a bunch of my life, and I'm a thorough believer that uh, that kind of stuff is uh, high quality. So don't don't hesitate to use it. One thing I have noticed is that chafe builds up in here. And it, uh, if you'll see this, this gearbox comes around and drives these, drives these chains right here, right there. This gearbox off this head drives these chains and chaff will build up right in here. Chaff or whatever you want to call it. Chaff from the hay. So if you uh, let your hay get too dry, it really packs up in here, and that's what happened to us. We had a little tractor issue, and uh, our hay got too dry and uh, caused it to really bind up. You can see that little kicker uh, bar underneath of it right here. That little kicker bar, just make sure the hay, when that door opens, that hay will roll on out. Hydraulic uh, cylinder here, it retracts opens the door. You can shut it off to hold the door open. You can adjust the speed at which it opens and closes right there. Uh, get back on this side here. I got a little bit ahead of myself while I go. But as this string comes out of here, you see it coming out of the box right here. Comes around that pulley, around this pulley, down through here, into the box right here up around here and when that bell the pressure when it when it notices and it indicates that this is full it kicks that out and when it kicks that out it drops this arm this string falls down in here the hay catches it and wraps it around. It comes around and then this knife right here catches it and uh, cuts it off. Bell full indicator. We have ours set to where it gets just into the yellow and it'll make a bell. We've weighed them. Uh, when they're fresh, they're about 35 pounds right now. Uh, they've sat here and they went through their little heat cycle and they're they're really pretty dry They're probably down to 30 pounds thereabouts, but you can see what size they are here's a They're about two, you know about two foot tall and about two foot around All right, so that's our that's our little Ibex TX 31 it uh, phenomenal absolutely Phenomenal. The uh, uh, 
manufacturer i think done a fine job uh we'll see how much it holds up uh it's pretty simple everything's rough built you know uh typical chinese craftsmanship i think but uh it is heavy built the uh cross member that's the power transmitter uh is uh excellent let me see here yep country of origin i don't know if you can see that china so uh 2022 it weighs 915 pounds so there it is uh we got it at tractor tools direct i highly recommend tractor tools direct excellent people if you see or you work with john you will not be disappointed he is an excellent excellent salesman it can it, it it comes with everything you need uh and here's our uh drum mower here again ibex equipment uh country of origin italy i don't know if you can see that or not it's a little dark in here italy uh, let's see what that dude weighs. It says 884 pounds. So you gotta have it. You gotta have a pretty good tractor. Our tractor will lift uh, 980 pounds, I think, according to John Deere. And so it's right at the limit. You know, uh, this thing here, the uh, three-point hitch. It's movable, kind of like that. It, it that lets it sway a little bit to the uh, contour of the land. It level it when you you level it and and cut with it. We level it. I actually take a. Let me show you here. I take a tape measure and measure the front cutter. And if you see back there, there's a back cutter. And measure that and when it gets level that's that's how i set it i don't i don't set it off this cage i don't set it off the top i set it off that and we actually have a riser plate you can just see that riser plate i highly recommend the riser plate on there it'll leave about a two and a half two to two and a half inch stubble if you do that uh, all of this stuff's included all these drive shafts all that come with it uh comes in a box uh you have, to, you have to put it together it took me and my wife the lovely sally probably a good day i would say all one day to assemble that dude uh to put the riser plates on it i would buy it the riser plates at the same time you buy the drum mower and uh put them on before you assemble it uh because they are nuts. They are absolutely nuts hard to get on uh, once it's assembled. This little lock is just a lock to lock it in place when you're transporting it. Uh, when you're cutting, that has to be loose. That allows the uh, the drum mower to float, I want to say, in a left to right condition. You know, so uh, allows it to float uh that is a flawless piece of equipment right there uh we have had absolutely no problems out of that piece of equipment we got it put together the instructions are a little bit you know italian yes you know italian english type stuff john was uh uh helpful salesman at tractor tools direct john was great at uh helping us with that now then we'll look at this what i consider not the greatest piece of equipment this uh four wheel rake the the problem with it is by the time you get the two wheels far enough apart to make a windrow where they don't catch grass and flip it and make a big bundle you're too wide for your for your uh hay pickup so you wind up having to rake it twice uh i have not figured out how to do that how to make it one rate this one right here made in italy 
okay uh, weight 260 pounds and uh, we're semi satisfied with that uh, it's not the it's not what uh, we had hoped it would be but we're getting you know like I told John I'm not friends with it yet but we're getting there I'll figure it out sooner or later our little John Deere 3025 I'm gonna tell you it's a house buddy it is a house it's uh, just the right size for doing this job uh, it, it's wide enough at the back that it's really stable uh, it's a, a six foot across I believe at the back it is a very stable piece of equipment I'll give you a little shot you can see that we have a little bit of a slope and we cut raked and bailed that with no issues none none whatsoever none whatsoever it, uh, it was easy 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 I do take the bucket off the front when I'm when I'm doing that just for uh, so I can make tighter turns but anyway that's our nice little uh, tractor it's got a live PTO it's just a electric button click it up PTO zone hydrostatic drive uh, hydraulics for the front uh, we don't have any hydraulics in the back that's another thing that little baler none of this equipment requires uh, uh, bailer, or hydraulics uh, from your tractor it's all self-contained uh, price wise what do we give for all this these three pieces of equipment check check tools direct for their current pricing but I'm gonna say we were into it for twelve or thirteen thousand. These little old balers, uh, uh, around six thousand, I think, something like that. But uh, everything worked great. And uh, anyway, the video's running along. Uh, we love it. I totally recommend Tractor Tools Direct, and I also recommend Ibex Equipment. Y'all have a good day.